it's just me. You know, I can never really do anything, like, half-hearted. It's so funny because I did things half-hearted and it almost destroyed me for a long time, being on tour. You know, between the ages of 17, 18, were just, actually no, 16 to 18 was just killer for me. I was competing half-hearted and just because I didn't really want to be there at the time. For me, I just go full steam ahead. I just whack it into fifth gear and just go because there's no really, there's no in-between for me. It's either full steam ahead or not at all. The Wright siblings appear to be stuck in overdrive making it hard to believe the wheels fell off for both over the last few years. For Owen, it was off-season back surgery, which he crash-tested recently at Chow Pu. Owen right digging in, looking down the ledge, air drops it, pulls it, the wave spits. Come on out. Owen Come right out. is getting shoved oh. down by the inside of the wave. Oh, my goodness. I think I would have been one more second away from just gulping a whole lot of seawater. I was just out of breath. Um, just the sheer force of the wave coming down on my body was just compressing me. It took all the air out of me and just winded me. Back at her new house on the Gold Coast, his sister Tyler was watching. Owen will utilise it. Another perfect drop in, quick double hand. To do that, that's crazy. However she reacts to Owen's decisions, it's almost as though it takes a right to truly know one. You say that you're different, but a lot of people would say that you share one thing in common, and that's that you're both very committed on the way. Yeah. As in, like, we'd, we'd both go? Yeah. Yeah. I guess I learnt from, you know, him, and, you know, he learnt from my oldest brother and my younger brother as well. And the area that we grew up in, it's just a fantastic playground for... Uh, to just hone those skills of not pulling back. Oh! Talking Ouch. herself back up quickly, Potts. Wow, that was a really awkward place to go down. For me, I, I couldn't pull back. It was, you know, you pull back, you just, oh, you, you, it's not worth it. You're just better off just going over the falls and dealing with that rather than not going and then dealing with them going, what, you didn't go? The Wright family story is surfing's well-known fable, almost a case study in nature and nurture in the way Rob and Fiona's five kids grew up at Culborough Beach on the New South Wales south coast. Our whole street surfed. You know, there was about 15 kids in one street and we all surfed out the front and we all played chicken out the front and, you know, we went body boarding, played soccer on the beach, cricket. You know, that was just what we did every afternoon. And then, you know, we had the soccer games and touch football and everything like that. The right parents encouraged their kids to surf, but getting them to school was Fiona's job. And I don't know why she let us go out in the morning, but I guess you just can't say no to us when you got, like, a bunch of us just going, oh, yeah, we'll just be out there, we'll be out in the water, half an hour, we'll be in, we'll have breakfast, we'll be on the bus by 7.30. Never happened. You must look back on that and laugh as a family now. Yeah. Oh, we just... We, every now and then we just like to, you know, talk about the, the old days of when we used to go to school and things like that, and the amount of times that we just would stay out in the surf and just mum would be whistling and, and the amount of stress that mum had and the amount of fun that we were having, you know, we, it's like we were pushing mum to the breaking point. You'd be sitting in the water, you'd be having so much fun, everyone's out there mucking around and mum would come up on the platform and whistle. She had this, this whistle that's so loud and piercing, it's amazing. And um, we'd just sit out in the water and be like, no, nope, we can't hear anything. <laughs> They pretend to uh, not hear me when I know they could. <laughs> so what was that like as a mother? Your kids are out in the surf and you're whistling at them. You know they can hear you. Yeah, and they got watches on and they time it perfectly to miss the bus. So what happened then? Then I let it go because they've missed the bus and go, OK, they'll come in when they're ready and then I would just have to drive to town to take them to school. They must have driven you mad. They did, yeah, exactly. Owen's flat at Snapper Rocks on the Gold Coast was part of a right migration north and the fruit of a pro career that never looked back from its beginning in 2010. 
Owen had won National Age titles from 16 onwards, and his younger sister had already been spotted. Taught by her brothers to never hold back, Tyler was into all sports, but mainly soccer and surfing. I remember there was one, uh, the Bells event. Rick Curl had given us a wild card into the Rick Curl International Grom Search. No, they gave us one into the National Grom Search, and then I was like, nah, I got a game on. So I was like, nah, blew it off. And then they're like, oh, what, really? I'm like, yeah, no, I got soccer on, can't do it. Like, no, you're tripping. That must have been how the surfing world reacted when Tyler trialled her way into the Beachley Classic at Manly in 2008 and won it. She was 14 and in year eight. It broke the record and changed her life. I wasn't prepared for what it meant to the world. Um, you know, for me, it was just like, oh, sick, you know? Um, I was just a kid surfing just surfing like it always have been. And, you know, I managed to do something really cool with it. And that's all it was to me. But to the rest of the world, you know, that was, from that moment, you know, there's a fair bit of expectation on what I should do. There's a lot of talk, you know, and you try and block it out as best you can and, you know, but sometimes it does filter through and, you know, you really, you really shouldn't listen to it. <laughs> Looking back, Tyler sees ability but not the headspace to cope with being a professional at 15. You know, doing the things that I did so young, um, it was, I think I did it two years before everyone else did it. Um, and a lot of that time, you know, everyone else is, you know, in school, doing exams, you know, going out, kind of doing all that kind of stuff. And I'm, you know, in the gym five times a week. Um, you know, working my butt off to surf. By the end of 2012, Tyler had three thirds and a second, but something was missing. I actually kind of decided to quit, um, you know, and I, I wasn't gonna come back after that year. I didn't tell anyone that. <laughs> um, but then I, you know, I had a break for a long time. I didn't surf for a long time. Call it a soft rebellion, but Tyler rode nothing apart from the present she bought herself to get around her dad's farm at Lennox Head. It came to a breaking point where I was just hated everything. And it was actually Owen that pulled me up and he goes, Ty, you don't have to do this. You know, you don't have to do this. You can go do whatever you want. And it was the first time I realised that I could. I didn't have to keep surfing. If, you know, I loved it and that will never change but I didn't have to do it for a job. I didn't have to do it for a living. Um, and he, he was the first one that explained that to me fully and he made sure I listened. It kind of just, yeah, really turned it around for her and she just was just really, really kind of opened up and started to find that love and joy in what she was doing. Now, I kind of been through that myself at times and, you know, on probably less of a scale, but, you know, last, last year I had a whole year out and she was there for me the whole time and, uh, it, was, it was good for me too because I was getting to watch her and support her through her world title campaign. That 2013 campaign began with victory on the Gold Coast, but as Tyler points out, it was shaky all the way from a lost first round heat to the final she won in the last 30 seconds. Everything that I did, it was never a, a, a sure thing. You know, it was always a shaky step and it was always just trying to find my feet, just like seeing if that was, oh, yep, okay, that worked, sweet. Um, but, you know, that was, that was really an event for me where I'm just like, it kind of reconfirmed that, you know, I could do things my way, which was, made me a very happy person. <laughs> Victory over Sally Fitz in Rio gave Tyler the championship lead with three rounds to go. Although at the time you say there's no pressure, <laughs> um, it's, it's a complete deflection of all the pressure that you're under. Being so new to a situation that I've never been in before, I was, you know, I was, had no idea. And so I just did the best I could. And I think that's what I took away from last year, was that I just did my best. And, you know, you look back and you go, oh, could you have done anything different? No, and I, I wouldn't want to either. The hard stuff is part of Tyler Wright's ability, and you can narrow that down to this. Enough power to squat well over twice her body weight. Very, very strong. Stronger than most blokes I train. Um, yeah. 
I sort of can't, don't really want to give away too much or she'll kick me in the backside, but yeah. That's impressive though, isn't it? Yeah, she's very impressive with how strong she is. Tyler Wright, there's that power stomping on that back foot. They call her Leadfoot. The strength and the style able to match the power in any wave and the family's lack of fear. Is commitment a right family trait? You know what? I seen my sister, Tyler, in VG, and that was inspiring. The tour's return to the left-hand barrels of Fiji's brutal cloud break this year was made for Tyler. But courage doesn't always score points. Kind of, yeah. I find it very hard sometimes to, I guess, do what needs to be done to get through a heat. I find that very hard, and that's not me at all. And you'll watch, I've lost heats because I'm so true to what I believe in and, and how I want to surf. Um, and TD was a perfect example of that. I'm very much stubborn when it comes to, you know, <laughs> that, that, that kind of thing. Stubborn, but also incredibly determined. Going straight to a Huntington Beach break that made her a long shot for the US Open title. Her US Open win was incredible. I'm a brother and I always think that she's gonna do the best everywhere and the US Open is probably one of the places where I don't rate her to be the winner. Just because she's so powerful as a surfer and the waves are so small there, but she brought such a strong presence and so, so much joy and confidence and love and like it, she just brought it all to that event. I think just in the end I just found some waves and made the most of what I had and I think I knew, you know, it didn't matter what wave you went. If it was a wave, you go. Um, it was kind of that kind of situation um, and you didn't really get an option to be picky. So um, whatever wave came through, I just went. The Wrights don't do anything small. They have four dogs. Tyler's family is the force in her life. It's still very much the same. Um, they, they mean everything to me and they, I think they always will. The roller coasters you go on sometimes is just, Sometimes they can be unbearable and you just all you want to do is get off. You just don't you don't want to handle it anymore. You're over it. It's whatever. And then, you know, that's when either Owen or Kirby or Timmy or Michael will come in and be like, nah, you got this, you're sweet. <laughs> um, or they'll be like, Yeah, yeah, get off for a bit and then I'll then jump back on. They support each other so much, it's really good. Oh, they stir each other, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they Biggest fans for all of them, you know, they, they, they love each other heaps, so it's good. Can she win a world title? I think she can, yep. She's got all the skills, she's got all the mental game, she's got the love for it, and I just think that, you know, I think she's got that chance and, and she's got that drive to give it a shot too. Someone who's prepared to put the effort in to go and do it, and she's one of them. The Roxy Pro, we are in Hossiger, France. Tyler Wright is your champion. She went uh, second last year, she's won it this year. And you can see how stoked she is. And there she is, your champion, ladies and gentlemen, Tyler Wright. What a performance from her. Four scores up in the nine-point range. She's thrown nines away.